Hi, I'm Dr. James Amos. I'm a staff psychiatrist at University Hospital in Iowa City, and I also write the blog, thepracticalpsychosomaticist.com. This is a presentation about delirium, and it's probably best viewed on my blog site, The Practical Psychosomaticist. And uh, this is a little bit different in that um, I use both a short YouTube video, like this one, in conjunction with what's called WordPress presentation short code slide set, uh, which I hope that if you start them together, you can uh, follow along and boom, we're interactive. So let's start with the first slide, which is the title slide, of course, and the, and the title of this talk is, Do You Really Need This Psychiatric Consultation on Delirium? And uh, the point of the title, which is rather provocative, is that uh, in many cases, internists and intensivists probably could do a lot towards assessing and managing delirium before they ever call a psychiatrist. Now, it's not that the psychiatric consultant doesn't want to be helpful or wouldn't want to respond to this consultation request about managing delirium, but there is so much that the clinician can do by himself or herself before calling the psychiatric consultant. I think we ought to try calling attention uh, to uh, your own gifts in this regard. So let's go to the next slide, which is uh, really about uh, some basic information about delirium. Uh, you want to think about uh, what you can do yourself about uh, assessing and managing delirium before you call the psychiatric consultant. It mimics many primary psychiatric disorders, which is why I think many times psychiatric consultants are called a little too early. Its prevalence is about 20% in the general medical units and about 80% in uh, the ICUs. Uh, and by definition, it's caused by medical problems. So it's best to think of it as a medical emergency rather than a primary psychiatric problem per se. The uh, best way that a psychiatric consultant can help you uh, and to collaborate is for us to tell you what it's not. And that's that it's not a primary psychiatric problem. It's a medical emergency. Uh, however, you can assess it yourself using the confusion assessment method or the CAM, a popular and relatively easy to use uh, screening tool for delirium. And here's uh, a picture of it on this particular slide. Uh, you have to have an acute change in mental status and uh, problems with shifting focusing or sustaining uh, attention. And either evidence for disorganized thinking or alterations in the level of consciousness. So the next slide is about using something called the MINICOG a brief cognitive uh, assessment which increases the sensitivity of the CAN. And uh, here we have a short YouTube video of two of my best residents demonstrating how to use the MINICOG. So I'm going to uh, let you um, view, the, uh, view this short video while I get some reading done. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, short video clip on how to use the CAM and the MINICOG together in order to enhance your ability to identify delirium. It's really important to identify delirium because it leads to a lot of excess uh, medical morbidity and mortality and makes it much more likely, especially for the elderly, to be discharged from the hospital to long-term care facilities as well. So uh, this next slide actually shows how you can stitch the uh, MINICOG and the CAM together uh, and to use them um, in conjunction to uh, diagnose delirium. So uh, it's possible to uh, put these things together and to uh, uh, laminate them for use as, uh, as a reference tool as well. So let's um, go to the next slide, which is actually a short uh, video, about 12 minutes or so, uh, done by uh, the leaders in um, ICU delirium research at Vanderbilt in Tennessee. So I'm going to let uh, this video run so that you can see how the CAM ICU, which is a variant of the CAM, is used to uh, assess for delirium in the intensive care unit. Uh, while you're looking at that, I'm uh, going to just check a couple of things uh, and uh, 
this interesting book here. So. <laughs> ah, back. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, moving right along. Uh, the next slide is uh, uh, some information about basic delirium management recommendations that psychiatric consultants typically would uh, uh, leave for our peers in uh, intensive care and on the general medical units. So the first priority really is to evaluate and manage any medical problems that would be causing delirium. That's the first step. You want to try to avoid benzodiazepines, other sedative hypnotics, and anticholinergic medications, which uh, can also cause delirium. And you want to remember about the non-pharmacologic management of uh, delirium, which can go a long way towards even preventing episodes of delirium. There are eight of them, and you can see them. Uh, it's mostly about reorienting the patient, uh, providing cognitive stimulation during the day, improving sleep at night, uh, preferably without using sedative hypnotics, and uh, getting the patient mobilized as uh, quickly as possible, uh, in it, for example, after surgeries. Uh, it's really important to try to remove any restraining devices such as Foley catheters as soon as you safely can. Uh, if the patient wears things like glasses and hearing aids, you want to make sure that they're available for them. Uh, you want to collect uh, correct dehydration and encourage good nutrition and uh, keep the unit as quiet as possible. And uh, those are really important uh, interventions that can be manageable on uh, nursing units. The next slide is uh, some other basic recommendations and observations about alternatives to using uh, certain drugs like uh, um, Haldol for managing agitation and delirium. Dexmedetomidine has been studied, but it's important to remember that this is not a psychiatric drug, and this would be managed by intensivists, not psychiatrists. Uh, it's important to monitor the EKGs just uh, in order to make sure that uh, you don't expose patients to the cardiac uh, rhythm uh, disturbing effects of antipsychotics. And if the patient is receiving an antipsychotic like Haldol intravenously, you want to make sure that the telemetry is available. Uh, monitoring electrolytes and other uh, uh, lab parameters are very important for keeping uh, medical intensive care units uh, as safe as possible and uh, keeping in mind that uh, the uh, prolongation of cardiac uh, conduction uh, can degenerate into potentially fatal cardiac arrhythmias. So it's not trivial to use uh, injectable antipsychotics uh, in an effort to manage agitation of delirium. On the other hand, there are risk-benefit ratios to bear in mind, and if agitation threatens the safety of the patient uh, in excess of what delirium itself would cause, then uh, the uh, decision-making algorithm is much clearer. So the next slide uh, are reference links uh, to uh, useful uh, online resources for um, assessing and managing delirium. I hope this worked out well for you. Thanks for listening.